Hello there and welcome to another sports webinar and they're all wrapped up now, the Paralympics over there in Tokyo and suitably to wrap up what happened in Tokyo is Brian McNichol. Brian is a former Paralympian in powerlifting and he won a swathe of medals between the 70s and the 90s and he joins us right now. Hello, Brian. How are you, Brendan? I am, I am excellent, like a swathe of medals between the 70s and 90s. It sounds like a radio station, but uh, it, it, it's pretty good, though. Uh, yes, uh, there was a few uh, few medals um, in that time. Um, so uh, what uh, that stirred up a lot of emotions uh, with Tokyo and, and not having or not being able to get there as... Uh, uh, as an official of, in, in, in a capacity of an official. Um, it brought back a lot of memories and um, a, a lot of uh, emotion uh, wrapped up with that, seeing how well uh, the team was performing over there and just um, sort of relating it to back to our performances uh, back when I was competing. 80, go oh, 80 medals, 21 of them were gold. That's, that's extraordinary. Is that, is that our best ever haul at the Paralympics? Uh, not quite. It's the second at, uh, at Rio in 2016. Uh, they got, I think, 22 gold in, in Rio. So they almost got it's there, a, but still uh, some wonderful performances. Uh, and it really, it just really brought to the fore, uh, and I thought the uh, the coverage that Channel Seven did was was really good. You know, you just did, you really it was really immersive. You got into the the sports, you know, from anything from table tennis through to the uh, the, the basketball and the rugby. It was just amazing. Um, yeah, it was uh, it was good to be able to, to uh, sit back and watch it um, uh, on TV, uh, especially with us being in lockdown uh, in uh, in Victoria. So it was something to uh, gravitate to on a daily basis and an evening. So uh, the timing was pretty good. But then again, the Olympics were good timing too because that was in lockdown as well. So it worked out well. But what about your highlights? What did you uh, enjoy from it? Uh, look, there was a number of highlights, Brendan, but uh, the, the going right back to uh, to day one or just before day one was the announcement of a very good friend of mine, Danny DeToro, who was uh, named the flag bearer with uh, Riley Bat, um, dual flag bearers. So um, yeah, I go back a long way with Danny. Uh, if, if I can just uh, tell you a brief story about Danny. Um, uh, I was uh, a lot younger, of course, but um, I got a phone call uh, to see if I would go in and see a young girl that's just had an accident. Uh, 13 days after she had her accident, she uh, had a wall fall on her at a swimming carnival, a school swimming carnival. And um, uh, I'd, I'd already represented the country, I think about two or three times by then. And, and uh, I think they sort of called upon me to go in and see this young girl uh, to perhaps uh, have a chat to her and sort of uh, give us some hope that you know there is uh, there is life after you know the incident that she had and and mind you she was a good um, junior tennis player um, prior to her accident as well she was uh, going up the ranks of the tennis uh, world and um, I of course accepted the the offer to go in and see her but 13 days I'm sort of thinking all the lead up to that. You know, what, what do I say to a young 13-year-old girl that, you know, is not going to uh, ever walk again and, um, and, and you know, someone that's got had their life ahead of them? And, but anyway, I, I, I fronted up and um, her parents were there on outside the uh, room when I arrived at the hospital and medical people were still in the room, so we waited around for about half an hour and, and then they said, you can go in, and the parents said, you can go in and, and we'll stay out here. And I was sort of... Uh, in a way, hoping they would come in and sort of just help that really difficult situation. But anyway, they did, and then I went in and I introduced myself, and um, they were pretty well the last words that uh, I said to Danny, and uh, she just took over the conversation. Uh, and she knew exactly what she wanted to do, even then, 13 days after uh, breaking her back. And um, uh, she just wanted to get through rehab, get into a wheelchair, uh, and start to play tennis again. So she already had the tennis skills. She just needed the wheelchair skills and look at it now. So um, so I, I came out of that uh, about an hour and a half uh, discussion with her and I just was like, wow, what, what, a, what a wonderful person that, you know, 
she was then and, and grown up to, to be as well. And, and uh, we always remember that moment when I came in and I, I catch up with Danny on a, you know, many of occasions um, and uh, as very good friends because um, that was a pretty tough thing, um, you know, to, 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 uh, to go through at such a young age. But, gee, she's excelled.